Welcome back to my channel, Milan Garcon, and I'm your girl, Milan Garcon. I'm really excited. It's 2024. I wanted to come and talk to you guys about, you know, all of my revelations and thoughts and feelings about 2023 and where I want 2024 to take me, even though I'm letting life happen. I will be ready for every opportunity. I will be prepared for every opportunity, but I am, because what's for me is for me and what's for you is for you. Okay, so let's get that straight right now. Everything I'm talking about is I'm not chasing anything else. I'm not chasing the bag. Again, it's a, it's a school across the street, so they like to make announcements at this time to tell which kids to get on which buses. But um, that's neither me or your business. You stay here and I'll stay right here. I'll do my best because y'all know the ADHD be tearing me up. But um, I'm just really excited that it's a new year. First thing I want to talk about, let's get right into it. I am almost to the one year mark of my transition, which is huge for any girl that, you know, has transitioned or is transitioning. I'm thankful and grateful to be around so many trans women, have so many trans women in my life and, and like my chosen family. So I get to kind of see transitions at all stages, even before I started medically transitioning. I had socially transitioned kind of around like 2018 when I first moved to New York. I was pretty much living my life, you know, femme. And people treated me that way. It was never, it was never like a crazy thing. Of course, like I was super clocky, but that's not even like clocky, not even a thing in 2023. Like bitch, everything, everybody is clocky. Like there are cis women that they be like, oh, you're trans. It's like, girl, that is fish. Like stop playing with her. Stop playing with her. But either way, um, I'm just really excited to make it to this, almost make it to this one year mark because we'll, we're going to do another video for that. And for that, I want y'all, I want that to be more of a Q and A. Um, and, and I'm just going to share, you know, a lot of things in detail. And I think I might do my hormone shot on camera. Y'all know I've done that in a vlog before, but I think I'm probably going to record that on like Monday because I do my hormone shots on Monday. But, um, yeah, I'm going to do my best to post this on the day. January 16th will be my one year of taking hormones. And I'll, I'll do a whole story time of how it started and what, you know, what told me it was time to, you know, take my medical transition journey and all of that stuff. But I'm just, I'm just like so excited. Like it's what, um, cause we can't count the fourth. So fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th. 12 days away, that's less than two weeks. I will be one year in. And that is something that like when I first started my transition, which I'm sure a lot of girls can relate to, you just feel like, oh my God, it's gonna take so long to get one year in. And you almost, I mean, it's different for every girl. Like what I'm about to say now is kind of different for every girl, but you just kind of, for me, I felt like, bitch, it ain't real until you, until you got a year in. Because like everything that's gonna change has at least started to change. Right? It's like you're not waiting to see anything change or feel any changes or experience any changes up here, here, he like everywhere. It's like everything is doing what it's doing. So you kind of know what it gives at this point and you kind of start to get into your groove and, 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 and who you are as a woman and how you move in the streets because the world starts to treat you different once you start transitioning. One, they treat trans people different. And I have found that it's really weird to me, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, a lot of people, I guess I pass in certain, um, settings, certain settings. Cause if I'm around a girl, I'm not passing or like in, in, in 2023, that's another thing why I say passing and clocking is cause we're so visible right now. And so like just visible period, like you could be the most fishy cunt thing walking around and girl, they'll still clock you because they know what to look for, honey. Like there's certain bones and things that girl, they're not changing that back, not changing them shoulders, not changing. Okay, and if you can change them, hit me up in my DM because I need to know about that surge. But um, I have found that like, you know, you really experience how men treat women, how women treat other women, how society treats women. And in a lot of spaces, I find that out and it's like, damn, like that's fucked up whole time. Like in my head, I'm like, bitch, I'm a tranny. Like, girl, what? But either way, um. You know, it's been a lot of new experiences throughout 2023, a lot of learning experiences, 
Um, let's talk about dating. So I never went through like a dating phase, a whole phase, none of that in life, like ever. I had two boyfriends in college. Y'all know the story, blah, 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 whatever. If you really want to know, go look for the shit, even though, whatever. Go figure it out yourself or ask me in the comments. But um, I never really dated because I really just didn't feel comfortable with my body. I didn't feel comfortable with my body intimately in that type of way to like be like dating somebody. Um or or hooking up with people like it just wasn't because it was like guys either liked me to look more mask or more femme or it was never just like I like you but now it's like it's it's no way like you're attracted to me because you're attracted to me and that just is what it is and you're gonna know I'm trans from the time that we meet so I've been dating so that's been exciting it's been mentally taxing it's been mentally chaotic but on the outside on the outside looking in it's been fab, honey. And the experiences have been fab. And it's nice to kind of get to know myself through that, like, those experiences. Because that's a part of myself that I just kind of never knew. Like, I'm the girl. I'm shade. But um, that's been really, really, really exciting. And it's been very freeing. And it's really, it's really been healing in, this, like, in, in, in so many different ways. As much as it's hurt and I've found out how shitty guys are and I have found out how much of assholes they are and I found out that the majority of them are fuckboys not all of them but a high 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 majority are fuckboys do I think that a lot of them will grow out of it and be men one day absolutely but right now they're fuckboys so um I'm, I'm kind of learning all of that at this big age I'm in my late 20s soon to be 30 and it's just like it's, it's literally like adult puberty. It's like going through puberty, but as an adult, like you can't stay home because you don't feel good or because you've been crying all day. Like y'all, I cry so much now. But again, this is not about the first year of my transition. We're gonna do a video about that. So put your questions in the comments, DM them to me, like put like find a way to give me the questions. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok, send me the questions, make sure I see it. I'm gonna screenshot it and I'm going to answer your questions. So I'm going to do a uh, one year transition Q&A. That's gonna be the tea. That's gonna be, that video's gonna be a lot of fun. And I'm probably gonna like do some story times or whatever, but yeah, that's been sickening. Sickening, no. Let me see what else that I'm gonna talk to you all about. I've been at my job for a year and a half. This is the longest that I've been at any network, which I'm really proud of myself. I got a promotion last year, that was amazing. Um, I'm looking to, you know, continue to move forward in my career, continue to climb the ladder of, you know, in entertainment and television. Y'all know my tea, y'all know my body, y'all know my body. <laughs> But on you ain't fucking new body. Um, so yeah, that's fun. I am very proud of myself for being back on YouTube and being consistent again. You know, share my page, share all of that again. Tell me what y'all want to see because sometimes I do lack creative ideas because I'm just getting back into creating content. So you know, help me out if there are trends that you want me to do, things like that. I will do them, darling. Um, but yeah, what's some other stuff that I have wanted to talk to y'all about? Oh, just like randomly, something that's been on my mind, like the little boosty and a color purple situation. Let's talk about it real quick. Because I've been seeing a lot of trans women come out and basically defend lesbians. Now, I don't know if I don't follow enough of the lesbian community or they're just not in my algorithm, but it's always fucking black trans women standing up for the whole black community, no matter what part you are a part of. But um, it's just crazy how little boosty always got something to say when it comes to the LGBT qua. LGBTQIA for those that don't understand that the, but the legit he's always coming for us and I just think it's crazy that so many black people especially black men feel like oh well I want my, I, I want to take my child to go see the color purple and when it got to like the scene because you know there's a lesbian scene you know they kiss I don't know how far they take it in the new one but I saw the original color purple and it's just funny to me because it just shows how many people have not seen classic black movies. Like, there are a lot of classic black movies that I haven't seen. But you ain't seen The Color Purple to know that that was going to be in the movie. And if that's not something that you wanted your kids to see. Mind you, I was never taking my children to see The Color Purple because that's some trauma that they just don't need. You watch this lady. You watch this black woman get get basically tortured. S-aid. Because I, I don't know what you can and can't say on YouTube. But S S-aid. Um... You see this white man take it, take c complete control and advantage over her. Made her have his kids. He never respected her. The kids never respected her. He wouldn't teach her how to... Re it's just like separate her from her whole family. Like, did all of this terrible stuff. And then you get to the point for the first time that somebody actually shows her love in her life. And 
You have a problem with that? But also, you never saw the original? And you're the same guy that hired grown women to inappropriately assault your children and nephew, like your son and your nephew. And your daughter is a lesbian and masculine presenting. And your DL, because I'm just going to, uh, allegedly, but honey, nobody, grown men, like grown men, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, there are grown men that come up and they want to like hit on me or bag me. And I'm always like, you like trannies? And they be like, nah, da, 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 da. And then I look at them and they be like, nah, 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 you not, you not, you not, you not. And I be like, you want to find out? <laughs> and then they be like, yo, that's wild, that's wild, that's wild. But, you know, do your thing, do your thing. You know, da, 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 da. you know, you know, thank you for telling me. I respect that. I respect that. And they going about their fucking day. You got some that be giving me. I hope I don't have to get this little baby knife out of my purse because, girl, this is going to be a T. Oh, my God. Um, But when somebody, like, when a guy has a huge problem with, like, a feminine gay person or a trans woman, it's just like... What's going on in your closet? What's what's in your closet, honey? So I just think that that's super crazy. And I know that there are a lot of people that have the same opinions that Boosie has. And I always like to tell people too, like, you got to get off your block. Like, you got to go explore the world. You got to see, like, it, it's, it's a lot of opinions that you have where if you just got away from the people that you were raised around, you would see the world completely differently. And I feel bad for people that will never have that experience, whether it's you don't have the means to or you don't have the mental to because you're too ingrained in what the world has taught you and what your grandmother taught you and what your pastor taught you and all of that. Um, yeah, like, I just be feeling bad. The people that don't want to experience life. Um, let me drink some of my cranberry juice. Well, it's cranberry ginger ale. I, I've been, like, addicted to it. Um... Oh, we can talk about New Year's. My New Year's was terrible. My New Year's was absolutely terrible. I literally cried in the club, yo. Like, cried in the club with my girl, Julie. Just bawled in the club because I didn't really want to go out. But um, one of my good, good girlfriends, Julie, my sister, she came from Atlanta to visit. We were all supposed to go to D.C., but plans changed. So she came up here and... We went out and I like I knew I wasn't not gonna not go out on New Year's, but I just kn knew like okay we're gonna go out a lot because me Mermaid Julie we all like to party and I just wasn't feeling it. I was overwhelmed. My brain was cloudy. I my, it was probably the hormones because like when it gets towards the end of the week it's always a little difficult because I do my hormone shot on Mondays so like the levels start to drop by the weekend and you know the mental gets a little. Uh, but I pushed through, but by the last night, like New Year's Eve, I just, I was just crying in the club. I was crying in the stall and I just was just outdone and I just felt so drained and I knew that that's not what I wanted to do for my New Year's. And, you know, I'm definitely taking a break from the clubs. I just can't. It's just not where I want to be because I want to focus on other things. Like it's time to really buckle down on my career. It's time to really buckle down on my self-worth, my self-care. I want to get a therapist. Um... It's time to really focus on those things. I want to move from Long Island. I have to be closer to the city because with my schedule and the way I like to live my life, one, I need my independence. And two, I need to be able to get around and get around quickly without having a car. And that means I need to be closer to the, like, to the metropolitan area and not all the way out in the suburbs. So, yeah, I, I, I can't wait to take us on that journey of, you know, searching for apartments again. Because y'all know when I first moved to New York, which those vlogs are still there. Um, looking for apartments when my mom, my best friend, went, like when me and my best friend had moved out here together. And um, that that that's going to be exciting because, you know, your girl has a, a good job. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited to, you know, hopefully be, end up somewhere where I'm comfortable. Hopefully, I wouldn't mind doing a studio. But then I'm just like, dang, you really can't have company because everybody just be like in your room, in your space. But I wouldn't mind doing a studio for like a year and then like moving somewhere else, you know. I love new experiences. I love trying new things. So that's really going to be exciting. I'm really excited for that. I know I'm going to take the channel so many places. Y'all know this is like half a rant vlog, half a trans channel, and then 
another half is like a travel vlog because I travel a lot. Another thing that I'm definitely going to be sharing a lot more, and the reason I haven't shared is because I haven't been doing it, but I'm going to be... Hold on now. Hold on now, because this shit is trying to fuck with me. Trying to fuck with me. I had to make sure it was still recording, y'all. I had to make sure it was still recording. Because the little 10% or 20% battery came up. So that just let me know to speed it up, honey. But um, basically, I will be returning to ballroom. I don't know when. I don't know where. So runway girls. Face girls, who knows? Performance girls, who knows? Realness, best dress. You don't know how I'm coming and when I'm coming and where I'm coming from. But just know that when I hit the floor, it's to beware. Beware! Because I'm coming with a vengeance and I'm coming for all of my things and then some. I'm coming for my things, your things, and their things. So, um... I'm really excited about that. I'm going to really make it my business to make sure I'm vlogging these balls and, and showing the preparation, what it takes to get prepared for a ball. Because it's a lot right now. It's just like really looking at the ballroom calendar and seeing, you know, what fits in my schedule. Because what I'm not doing is taking off of work and doing all of this and traveling. No, 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 no. I will, I will pick things that already fit in my schedule, whether I was already traveling somewhere or that's like... Oh, that's close to home or, you know, things like that. Like I'm, and, and I'm going to walk a lot more balls in New York because I am a traveling walker. I love to travel and I love to walk balls. So I mix those two together and I travel and walk at the same time. But when I do that, a lot of times when I'm in New York, I just want to go to the ball and just have fun. Cause it's like, oh, I'm home girl. I'm not doing all of that. Well, I need to walk a lot more balls in New York because New York is the um, mecca of ballroom. So I'm really excited to like bring that part of my channel back out and really take a deeper dive into, you know, what it takes to be somebody that's walking a ballroom. Because a lot of people like to align themselves with ballroom. A lot of y'all like to watch the drag queens, um, Vogue in the clubs. And, you know, that's no problem if you're actually in ballroom or you're taking classes or, you're, like, you are invested in the scene. Like, I'm not saying you got to walk, but at least be a spectator or something. Like, what? Like, it'd be crazy. But either way, you know, a lot of people would want to know more about ballroom and I'm your girl. So, I'm excited about that. I'm going to be working on getting my podcast you know, back up and off the ground. I worked with a few companies before. We did some trials and, you know, things went this way, things went that way. That's the life. That's the industry. But I'm ready to come back with some strong pitches and really get into that. So, you know, I'm I'm just really excited about this year. It's, it's coming with a lot of like, it's hard to say, it's not hard to say this, but like, y'all remember back in the day when Kylie Jenner was like, this has just been like the year of realizing things. And everybody thought that was so remedial, so like, dumbed down and now the older you get the more you realize like nah 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 bitch she was on to something like that was the year of realizing things um so i realized a lot about myself uh l like i said i'm really trying to figure out right now like what does self-care mean for me because when i used to think self-care was like oh go do your skincare routine and go exfoliate and go put a mask on and go like do your hair go lay out in the sun but it's like or like go work out but like those are all like vain things you know what i'm saying now, th those are all outer physical things yes they're a part of self-care because you're taking care of yourself but i i want to get this up here to be top tier you know what i'm saying like i want i love being able to feel my emotions but i want to be able to feel them and process them because i learned something your emotional response center only reacts for about 90 seconds 90 seconds to two minutes so anything outside of that you're crying all week over something or you know you're mad about something you won't let it go that's you just carrying the fuck on okay because your body has actually stopped the processes of feeling emotion of, of, of feelings based on emotion after about 90 seconds to two minutes so i really want to work on that I really want to, you know, like I said, get in therapy. I need somebody to talk to that I can, like, you know, talk about all these new things that are changing. Talk about things in my life that, you know, I don't really want to talk to my sisters about or I want to talk to my mom about. I want to have somebody that's not going to either have my side or automatically be on, like, the opposite side. Like, oh, you're wrong or oh, you're right. Like, I want somebody that just, like, is just going to give it to me straight. Whether I'm wrong, right, whether it's two sides of the story, like, that's what I need. Um, because I'm an overthinker and I get overwhelmed very easily. So, yeah, like... Those are the things I'm excited to do. But those are all exciting things. But a lot of the self, like the inner, like the inner, the inward self work, it don't feel that good. Like it's it's not a good feeling. A lot of times, 
You're going to feel sad. You're going to be impatient. You're going to feel like you let yourself down. Um, when you start to set boundaries, whether it be boundaries for yourself or boundaries for other people, that's difficult to, you know, navigate sometimes because, you know, I be having to set boundaries with these niggies. Like, no, like, I don't have to talk to you. Just because you hit me up on Instagram don't mean I got to reply and I'm not replying. But, you know, sometimes I'll be like, oh, well, that's mean or, oh, like, you could be missing out on your husband. And it's like, honey, when you get to where you're supposed to be in life, that's when you're going to attract the type of people that you know that would be long lasting and, and be somebody of value that you can invest in that they will invest in you. Okay. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. I'm just in a, I'm, I'm in a serious moment of growth and change, but I'm accepting it. It's, I'm always accepting the growth and change. Anybody that has watched my channel, what were you on? 21 minutes. Oh honey, it's time to shut this motherfucker down. Um, Anybody that knows me, anybody that's watched my channel, y'all know I love change. I love new adventures. Um, life is full of evolution. That's the only thing we see. We have four seasons every year. Nothing stays the same, so why should you? And if there's one thing I'm going to leave everybody with is it's a new year. My mom posted something on Instagram that I thought was so motivational. It's a new year, which means uh, you get to write a new book and you have 12 chapters. And you have all of these pages in between. So, um, you know... Write the, write the best story for you. Write the best story that you can. Every page may not be happy. Some chapters may be sad. Some chapters may be challenging. And some chapters may be filled with joy. Some chapters may be a little boring. But it's your story and it's all you got. So make it the best and, you know, feel it. I do, like, like, that's another thing I could say. Like, it's, it's so difficult to say this, but like, Feel those freaking emotions. I'm trying not to cuss as much, even though I cuss this whole video. I'm choosing the end to not curse. But yeah, um, there was one other thing that I wanted to talk about real quick. I'm going to try to make it real quick. It was something else with like um, pop culture. What was it? I'm excited for Lil Nas's album. I hope Megan Thee Stallion gives us a new album this year. Um, Nicki Minaj's Pink Friday 2, Chef's Kiss. It grows on me more and more every day, even though I loved every song from the beginning. It's like, bitch, woo! It finally, I finally got something to replace Renaissance because Renaissance had replaced SZA's Snooze album and SZA's Snooze album had replaced, Re um, Rihanna, I wish, um, had replaced, um, Ariana's latest album. Thank you, Next, I believe. So, it's like, I know it's a good album where you can take me out of my favorite album. So, that was, that was amazing. I'm so here for it, and, you know, I'm just excited to see all of the things that we're going to do on this channel and experience them, experience them with you guys. So, again, the next video that's coming up is going to be more focused. I won't just be rambling. I won't just be, like, talking about random shit that's on my mind. Um, but I just wanted to give y'all what I'm thinking about currently right now, and that is that. Um, I'm going to work out a posting schedule as well. So, y'all let me know if y'all, like, when people post on the weekends or weekdays. And from there, I will take it, you know, from there. Um, but thank you all for watching. And thank every, I would like to thank everyone out there on my channel that has been with me since 2015, since I started the channel. I was in college and continues to motivate me and ask me, when am I coming? Well, before, before I came back, you know, when am I coming back again? And, you know, motivating me as I've started again, like, oh, your videos are back. I love them. Keep going. And then all of my friends and family that have been um, encouraging me. I just really thank you guys because it gets really tough. And this year has been really tough. This this year was hard, but we're going to talk about that next. Well, not next week. Next week's video is probably going to be about something else. But um, the week after that, we will have the one year transition video because we still got 12 days. So technically, technically, I wouldn't be able to record that and get it to you guys by next week because it wouldn't have happened and I'm not a liar. So um, unless... I have to be. But um, all right, y'all. It's been real. It's been fun. But it ain't been real fun. I have to catch you in my next one.